Hewitt, La Artistino, back again with another video. Today I'd like to give you a tutorial on a new method of colouring backgrounds, one that I'm seeing being used more and more often, and that is using pastels to shade the background in instead of trying to colour manually by hand with pencil. I've used this um, technique a couple of times and I'm quite excited about it. It's fast and it's fun and gives a very satisfying result. Here I've used it on this simple fish drawing in a completely relaxing colouring book six, Peaceful Ocean. This was my experiment to see how it would go. And here I've used it in, or oh, I've taken the cover off, but it's actually Enchanted Forest. And you can see a beautiful background, very quickly done. I think the background in all took me maybe less than 15 minutes and uh, works very well uh, once you seal it with um, different pencils and gel pens. Now I'll show you the equipment I'll be using. First of all my pastels. I've got an old set of Windsor & Newton soft pastels. Now note that is the pastels not the oil pastels. Oil pastels have an oily feel to them, the soft pastels are more chalky and this one's a very old set of mine I bought years ago I believe they're a little bit more expensive than $30.60 which is what I paid Australian for them. This is what they look like in the box and this is what I'll be using. You don't have to use this brand there are lots of brands both expensive and cheap of um, half pastels or assorted pastels. Um, you can try any of them I've only experienced using these ones and I'm quite happy with it but I'm sure you'll get good results with any. As with any um, technique, please uh, test it beforehand before putting it in your book. Also, what you will need is a cutter, a little box cutter. I use one of these. Some pads to smooth the pastel out. These little makeup pads I think are absolutely perfect. I've got a set of these. You can get them sort of individually. I've seen them in chemists and they look like that. That one's a bit used. They're usually pristine white. They're cheap. You chuck them away with each colour you use. There are other methods of smoothing the pastel around. Some people like to use cotton balls. I find that um, you can't, I, I can't get as smooth a, um, a result with these. If for little areas you could try one of these little double ended cotton buds, these are kind of special. These of this particular brand has a pointy area, pointy uh, tip on one end and a flat tip on the other, which is really good. I think these would be great for little tiny areas that you want to get into. But for this video today, we're just going to use a flat pad. Now, the other things you may use is an eraser and we'll go back to where why you need these in a little while. Uh, just a, a white eraser is best. I find the coloured ones and the hard ones um, tend to uh, damage the paper. Another eraser that you can it's very useful is one of these little clicker ones. I think this one's just about out. They're, they come in lots of different brands. I particularly like this one which is made by Pacer because I find that the ends are held very firmly in place and don't tend to be pushed back in when you use them. And one of my favourite new tools, thanks to a friend of mine, is a little electric eraser made by Derwent. And I will talk about these in depth in a later video, but these are great for tiny little corners that you can just, and little areas, if you just want to take a little bit off, and they're quite good erasers too, and the little tips are replaceable. Now next, you will need some fixative. With pastels, they have a nasty habit of smudging and getting on your fingers and getting everywhere. So if you want to protect your work when it's finished, you'll need to spray it with fixative. And the one I use is a workable fixative. This is a matte. This one's made by uh, Montemart, which is an Australian brand. But if you ask at your craft store, they'll have workable fixatives, um, surely for your countries too. Now, the other things that I would recommend because pastels are so messy and because I tend to be an absolute klutz and I get stuff everywhere when I am uh, using messy materials, I have a wet handcloth, very 
carefully wrung out so I don't drip it everywhere just to clean my fingers on so I don't get paw prints on everything and a hand towel just to wipe my hands so I don't get wet marks everywhere and I think that's about it okay we'll start Okay, here we go. This is the picture I've chosen in Joanna Basford's Lost Ocean to do today. I've chosen this particular picture because we've got a lot of white space. So it's a, a, good, a good one to um, do your pastels in. Uh, for starters, uh, you'll notice that the facing page I've covered with cling wrap and that's to try and stop the pastel dust from contaminating that picture. All I've done is I've folded over and tucked it in crossed it over at the back to try and hold it in place. Well, I haven't tried this before, but we'll see how we go. In my experience, you don't get much pastel dust on the other side and you can rub it out if, before you um, spray fixative. So, to begin, we'll choose our colours. Now, I thought since we're in the ocean, we'll go for some nice greeny colours. And I particularly like this one out of the uh, Windsor and Newton range. Now you take your pen knife, and just expose a little bit, being careful, always show care when you've got sharp objects in your hand. Press the book down. The problem with the binding of these books is you've really got to push them around a little bit. Now take your pen knife and just scrape as such. All I'm doing is I'm scraping pastel dust very gently, you don't need much pressure onto the page around the fish. Okay, I'll do a close-up so you can see how I did it. Okay, once again, take your knife, take your pastel, and just scrape. Don't need much pressure at all. Now, I would recommend that you just put a little bit on to begin with. You can always add more if you want to. Once you put some on, take your pad. If I can get one off here. So take your makeup remover pad, fold it into a little edge like that, a little bit, flatten it off a little bit so you've got a nice surface. Place it on and to start off just dab it because you're going to be picking up the stuff on your pad first and then rub it in with little circle movements as such. Now there is a step I'll recommend because I just remembered it and it's something I do recommend you do and that is take that off grab a piece of paper beforehand now printer paper is perfect if you don't have printer paper then shiny glossy magazine papers will do but just pop it in between the pages that you're working in just to try and protect the page below. There we go. Something I should have done to start off with, but you know it's never too late to do it, so just do it when you think of it. Then I want this a little bit darker, so I'm going to scrape on a little bit more chalk and use my pad to just rub it in. Just little circle motions, pick up, try not to drag it around too much or you'll get streaky marks. But the thing is, if you do get streaky marks, just rub and the streaky marks will go. While the pastels haven't been fixed to the paper, they're actually quite movable and you can rub quite a bit of it off if you don't like it. And on that note, don't be frightened to cross over onto the actual drawing itself if you want a nice, you know, even surface going right up to, to the actual artwork. And I'll show you why in a sec. So just do this for the entire picture. I'm going to pan the camera back now and so you can see me cover the entire picture. with the depth of colour here so I'm just adding more. Pat it in a little bit, little circle motions just up and down I find just lifting and 
lifting and placing, lifting and placing. And, and I do that particular rhythm to avoid making blotchy areas or streaky areas. And practice this yourself on a piece of paper and you'll get the hang of how to get a nice smooth background out of it. That looks fairly smooth now. Now, if you want to add another colour over the top, that's easy. Just select another piece and I probably wouldn't select anything like red because the red would mix with the green and it would get a bit, give you a bit of a yucky shade, a bit of a brownie shade. So I would stick with colours that would appear on either side of the colour wheel. Um, probably a, a, a green, a darker green would be good or even a blue I think would look really nice on this too. I'm going to go with a darker green and I'm just going to pop a little bit in the corners just to frame the fish. So same technique, just a little. Now I find this dark green is quite intense so I'm only going to dust on a little bit in the corners and that will help to focus your attention on the fish in the centre. There's all sorts of possibilities for this particular picture. If you're um, a bit artistically inclined, you could draw some nice um, seaweed in the background. But for this one, I might do that on the facing page. There's a similar fish on the facing page. Now, again, pick up one of these. I would recommend um, a different one for every colour just to stop the colours from mixing and just put your dob it a little bit just to pick up the colour and then start rubbing it in and I said I just want a subtle look for the corners I don't want it too dark probably the hardest bit I think is that spine just because it bends over a little bit I don't know if you'll get it exactly perfect you can try I'm quite happy with just the way it's turning out right now down the bottom and it's just tinting the corners of the page just a little bit. And you'll notice about this technique is just how fast and easy it is to achieve a really smooth nice background which is you know, uh, more interesting than just the plain white background. Though if you want, you could just have this fish on the plain white background, it's up to you. That's coming along nicely, I'm rather happy with that. you want to remove any pastel at this stage you can lighten it by using a clean one of these on just the back of the one you're using and getting rid of some excess if you put too much on or as I'll show you in a minute if you want to clean up your center figure in this case it's the fish then we need to move on to the erasers blow to get the excess powder off so I can see what I've got. And I 
might have a look at it. I see I've got a little wet mark there. I must have had a bit of moisture on that point. I'm not going to worry too much about it. It's fairly minor. Now, if I really wanted to, I could perhaps wait for it to dry, rub it off, and then reapply some of this again. But I'm not going to get too fussed. Now, now as I was saying, erasers. Here's the next step. This is where these guys come in. Now, before using the fixative, you can go through and just take away the colour you don't want. Now, if you accidentally go over the lines and go into the background colour which you want to retain, that's an easy fix. Just pick up your pad again and rub the colour back on. Now, I'm just going to go around and do some here. That's all right to a point, but if you want to get into the finer details, and these pictures do have a lot of fine details, try one of these ones and just rub around the edges. Now, I'm not going to be fussed to take it all the way back to, to um, clean or all the way back to the edges because when you colour over the top, unless you want to leave areas white, it's, it's so faint it's not going to show you through. Alternately, I'll grab a clean tissue and just flick the rubbers, the uh, rubber shavings off. And if you're lucky enough to have one of these bad boys, just press the button to hold it down and just put it where you want the pencil, the um, pastel removed. Very gently and very carefully. Now, a word of warning: these guys vibrate and they do jump around a bit so if you're doing this kind of thing you can feel it's pulling you off to one side so go very slowly and gently with a firm hand and you should be right and just keep continuing until you finish the entire fish Okay, now the next step is to use your fixative. And here, as I said, I use this one, which is made by Micador, an Australian company. It is workable matte fixative. The matte will give it a tooth, which means that you can go over the top with pencil or whatever, and the pencil will hold in the tooth. Don't um, grab a, a glossy fixative because the glossy fixative will be harder to, to colour over. So this is the workable matte fixative. There are other brands that make it. Just check at your own local hobby store for uh, a can. Now important, don't do it inside. Um, I don't know uh, what the effects of the fumes are on your lungs but I don't want to find out either. So let's take it outside, give it a good spray. So that'll be off camera. But just to show you what I'm doing, what I will be doing outside is holding the spray so, holding it about 10 inches or uh, perhaps 25 centimeters above my subject and just quickly swish, 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 making four passes quickly and then another swish, 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 swish. And that will be plenty. You don't want to saturate the picture and it's important that you don't use this stuff on where you've already coloured in with gel pens or with markers because that'll make them bleed through. So only on the pastel or the pencil, these guys. 
And that concludes my tutorial on how to do backgrounds with pastels. If you'd like to see me complete this fishy fellow, please click through to my next video.